I already examined the bottlenecking impact that a Skylake Pentium CPU would have on most recently released graphics cards. This video is similar in goal with the subject today being an Intel Core i3 chip, specifically the i3-6100. The questions that I want to answer are similar to my previous video. Which graphics cards are bottlenecked by the i3 and by how much? How much better is it than the Pentium? And is it really a good choice for lower end PC builds? The i3 is typically the base chip that I've seen recommended in many lower cost builds, even to the point of being paired with the higher end graphics cards. The i3 is an interesting chip because it's still a dual core CPU equipped with Intel's version of simultaneous multi-threading known as hyper-threading. That means it can act like a quad core CPU in many instances, allowing for up to four lanes of processing to happen concurrently. This would allow for certain bottlenecks that were experienced by the Pentium to be alleviated by the extra threads the i3 introduces. However, due to the way that some games are programmed, those threads are not necessarily treated as pure cores and therefore don't always provide the benefits that you would get from a true quad-core processor. Quick note on my testing, I'll be pitting the i3-6100 against an i7-6700K as reference. The test system was run with 16 gigabytes of RAM at 2400 MHz, and the graphics cards used were the RX 460, RX 470, and RX 480 on the AMD side, and on the Nvidia side there was the GTX 1063 and 6 gigabyte editions, GTX 1070, and GTX 1080. For the games, it's a mixture of newer titles that have both DirectX 11 and DirectX 12 benchmarks, as well as some past favorites of Grand Theft Auto 5 and Metro Last Light, but all of them running at the same nearly maxed out detail settings. Following are going to be a couple minutes of benchmarks, and by couple I mean a lot. I'll do my best to simplify the information for you, but most likely you should pause the video whenever you need in order to extract the data that you're particularly looking for. With Ashes of the Singularity first up, the most CPU bound game that I tested, the limiting effects of the i3 are immediately apparent, coming in with a double digit percentage loss in most cards, save the RX 460 in both GTX 1060s at 1080p DX11. DX12 at 1080p allows all of the AMD cards to perform roughly the same, while the 10 series mostly suffer significant drops. 1440p provides the same idea in DX11 with losses in most cards, but in DX12 only the GTX 1080 appears to have much more headroom to grow. At 4K, DX11 still hurts most cards, however DX12 again frees up most of the cards with the 1080 only suffering a modest loss. Deus Ex is a different story with only the GTX 1080 showing any sort of significant change in FPS at 1080p, and even then it's only 2 in DX11 and 4 in DX12. At 1440p, both runtimes are basically equivalent across the board compared to the 6700K performance, and the same holds true at 4K. Both DX11 and DX12 perform the same as their 8-threaded counterpart. Grand Theft Auto 5 is a bit more limiting with all GPUs showing restrictions at 1080p, up to 30% at the top levels. 1440p is less restrictive, but still the top GPUs are held back. It's only at 4K that only the GTX 1080 is still limited by the Core i3, but only by 3 or so FPS, still pushing some respectable gaming numbers. Hitman is again a bit restrictive. The 470, 480, 1070, and 1080 are all boasting above 15% losses, with the 1060s hurting by a bit less and the 460 being unaffected in DX11 at 1080p. The effects in DX12 are a bit less for the AMD GPUs and lower level Nvidia cards, and a bit worse for the 1070 and 1080. At 1440p, only the RX 480, GTX 1070, and 1080 suffer significant hits in DX11, with DX12 giving the RX 480 freedom and only inhibiting the 1070 and 1080. At 4K, all losses are again mitigated with the GPUs limiting themselves at this resolution in either DirectX versions. Metro Last Light appears to make decent use of the extra threads on the i3 with only the GTX 1080 seeing a mentionable loss at 1080p. At 1440p and 4K, the GPUs are able to stretch their legs without consequence. And finally, Rise of the Tomb Raider still shows some restriction for most of the GPUs at 1080p in DX11. DX12 loosens it a bit, but still the i3 hinders most. 
At 1440p, as in most other examples, everything besides the top two NVIDIA cards are troubled in DX11, but DX12 appears to free things up on all accounts with negligible differences between any of the cards. At 4K, again, nothing to speak of here in either runtime with the differences not really arising at all. This resolution hurts the GPUs more than losing CPU cores. Okay, so that was a lot, and it's not as cohesive as was the case with the Pentium chip. So questions one and two. Which graphics cards are bottlenecked, and by how much? Well, all and none and some. <laughs> the optimization of the game for multi-threading appears to dictate that answer rather than the CPU itself. At 1080p, it's a crapshoot, but lower end to middle of the road cards such as the AMD GPUs and GTX 1060s seem to be mostly okay. It doesn't really seem to knock the cards out of the bracket that they were in. If they were getting 60 plus FPS averages, they stay there. And if they were getting between 30 and 60, they stay there as well. And while I didn't show minimum FPS numbers to keep the charts from getting too convoluted, the minimums were within one FPS of each other from the 6700K, so they're of little consequence. Answering the fourth question, out of order, is an i3 an okay choice for lower budget builds? It appears so. It's not perfect, that's for sure. You are likely losing FPS, even if it runs well, but if they're FPS that are superfluous, as in over 60, then your experience really shouldn't be any different. And I suppose that thought will help me answer the third question. How much better is it than the Pentium? The answer is a lot. And while I could go back to the charts to objectively show you the higher FPS, the answer isn't just about the numbers. The i3 chip provided a different qualitative experience than the Pentium, not just a quantitative one. While the Pentium fell all over itself and was hampered tremendously in average frame rate, it also provided frame stuttering in many of the instances where the GPU wasn't limited or was running at decent frame rates. I could get 60 FPS in some games with the GTX 1080, but it was an unplayable experience. With the Core i3, rather, I can get 60 plus FPS with the 1080, but it's an enjoyable gaming experience. The frame stuttering is not perceptible, and not to mention that everyday tasks such as loading into Windows is a considerably quicker experience with those two extra threads over just a dual core alone. An i3 may not be perfect, or the best choice, but if you're on a smaller budget, it's not a bad one either. And for everyone who's wondering what the difference between the i3 and i5 would be in terms of gaming, you'll have to wait until my next video in this series to find out as I'll be examining the i5-6500 in the same manner. But speaking of the i5-6500 and my next video, none of this would be possible without the support of Wootware. They've sponsored all of the hardware to make this video possible. If you live in South Africa, you should check out Wootware to get all of your hardware as well. With great prices on their entire selection, as well as country exclusives to their amazing customer service, Wootware will make sure that your experience with them is fantastic. Be sure to check out their ongoing deals, as well as their promotion of a free copy of Civilization VI with either a power color or his RX 480. So if you're in South Africa, head on over to wootware.co.za to woot up your life. The link will be in the video description. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, checking out the performance and experience of the Core i3 CPU. If you found this video useful, helpful, or enjoyable at all, I'd appreciate it if you left a like down below or a dislike if you thought negatively of this video. Be sure to subscribe if you're new around here and you want to stay up to date on all of my tech-related content, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers.